three. So we are still on the quest for meaning. The, the quest for meaning. Quest for meaning. So um, you go to open your scripture with me to that chapter three. We have a lot to cover. I put it like 10 points, but we'll see as much as we can go within so that we can just proceed to the end of this service. Your life is, and I have this open speech, and I want you to listen to me, please. Your life is an open book to the God who wrote every chapter of it. So he knows everything about you, your past, your presence, and your future. So God knows everything about you. Look at the one, somebody near you, at your back and your front. Somebody sitting near you. At this exact moment, this is exact time, listen. This is the truth about that person who sits near you. That brother or that sister has no concept or idea whatsoever of what is going on inside of you. That person has no idea what is what we are processing right now inside of you. Only God, who wrote the book of your life, who created you, knows exactly where you are at this point of your life. He knows. That chapter of the book of your life, the book of your destiny, your creator knows what you are thinking right now. The person near you doesn't know it. How you are feeling, how you are trying to understand life and make sense of it as it is presented to you every day, every moment, in a way that this with your fears about the future and disappointments in the past, issue of your family, your marital status, your singleness, your job, your future, he knows everything. So, let's go to chapter 3 of Ecclesiastes. So, I did a little bit of arithmetic. So, you go to count with me if you have a pencil or anything or pen. You have, you have your Bible, you go to count this with me. And you go to see that I got this one right. This is simple arithmetic. We're talking now in Ecclesiastes chapter 3. I want to talk now on verses 1 to 8. Verses 1 to 8. I titled this The Circle of Our Lives. The Circle of our lives. The same thing that is happening to every one of us. No one is excluded. What we are looking at right now. So you can't wait. To everything that is ceasing. To everything that is ceasing. A time for every purpose under heaven. A time for every purpose under heaven. I counted a time, a time, a time, a time. I came to 28 times that this statement was made 28 times. I'm going somewhere, so just come along with me. And th these 28 times, you can divide them into two. 14 positive, 14 negative. And if you know a little bit of arithmetic, so this 28, 14 minus 14, what do you got? We are all on grand zero at the end of it all. It's all vanity. So count with me. A time to say, that is the first positive. A time to die. That is one for negative. So if you have paper, be writing, when I say one for positive, put one there. When I say one for negative, put one there. So 
we have two now. One for positive and one for negative, right? At the end, they will cancel each other. A time to plant, say positive two. Are you writing it down? So I don't even need to say, just be writing, because I calculated this one, I didn't mix, I went through this one several times, so no mistake. A time to pluck what is planted. When you are plugging it, you are taking it out. That is negative two. You are taking it out. A time to kill. You are taking it out. Negative. You are taking it out. I mean, a time to hit positive. So now we got positive three. One, two, three, negative three. A time to break down, negative. A time to beat up, positive, right? A time to weep, negative. Nobody wants to cry. A time to laugh, positive. A time to mourn, negative. A time to dance. A time to cast away stones. A time to gather stones. You are a good mathematician. A time to embrace. Thank you. A time to refrain from embracing. Thank you. A time to gain. Positive. A time to lose. A time to keep. A time to throw away. A time to tear or tear down, whatever. Thank you. Sue. Showing something. A time to keep silence. That is positive. A time to speak. That one is negative. Because from many words come what? Mistakes. A time to love. A time to hate. A time of war. A time of peace. I get 28. So, they cancel each other. So, how amazing God is. And this happens to all of us. So, 14 minus 14 is zero. 14, 28 statements. 14 positives. In the Praise the Lord. So, 28 total, 14 minus 14 gives us zero. That is vanity. If we look at our lives in a way it's exactly like this arithmetic. Addition and subtraction. Everything ends up in grand zero. Explanation of the circle of our lives, the same old routine. The same old routine. 28 statements, 14 pluses, 14 minuses, as up to nothing at all. Okay. You know, we all know that there's a time to be born. So, the time to be born and the time to die, these are boundaries of life under the sun. And these two were mentioned first because they are very important. You know, man born of a woman loves to be in control. We love to be in control. A man wants to be in control of his wife. The wife wants to be in control of, his, of her husband. Children, they want to control their parents. Parents want to control their want to control your boss. Your boss want to, we love control. Even some president of some nations, they want to control. Even after they had left the presidency, they still want to be in control. You know what I'm talking about? I don't need to mention names. But the reality is that we want it in control of our arrival. And that's the first thing I want to explain under this circle of life. We aren't in control of our arrival. You did not choose where to be born. You, you did not choose your parents. You did not choose you know, the country you come from. You did not choose the color of your skin. You did not choose the, your, your, your race, your gender. You did not choose all these things. And also, we are not in control of our departure. And that is the main problem. And that is why you need not to fear. You are immortal. Until your work on this earth is done, God determines when you leave this place. Regardless of how you expose yourself to danger, regardless of how you try to protect yourself, 
God determines when you will leave this place. And when your time is up, you cannot add a second to it. The circle of life. We're looking for meaning to this. You are immortal until your assignment here on earth is done. Then God will call you home. So in the scheme of things, there is a circle over which we have no control. You have no control over season. In fact, if I want to be in control of season, I want summer to continue in Chicago. But trust me, very soon we are going to end summer. And fall is knocking at the door. That dreaded summer, I mean winter, is on the way. We cannot control that. You cannot control when sun will come up. You cannot control when moon. You cannot control. You do not have control over these things. And that is the problem. That is the problem. Things, these things that are so crucial to us, we have really no control over them at all. The inevitability of trouble and evil and of the relentless monotony of life, we have no control over it. So as you see that, it's a mixed bag. There is no one born of a woman that can escape evil in this life. That can, that, that can es escape some negative things we read here now. It's plus and minus. You cannot say, God, I need only plus. I do not want the minus. You got everything together. And God knows when and how, but he's going to take care of you. He will not let you go further than you can undo. Colossians chapter 4, verse 5, now says, Walk in wisdom toward those who are outside. Redeem me the time. So now you know you have no control over these things. You have no control over when you are here. No, you will have control over when you will live here. So redeem the time. Take better use of your time. Ephesians 5, 16 says, Redeem me the time because the days are evil. As we have good, we have evil. There is nothing you can do about it. No matter how you pray, you will experience good, you will experience evil. It's not a cause. That is how life is. We go to the next one because of our time. I don't know how much I'm going to explain this, but this one is also very important. We have explained the circle of life. All these things come in the circle 360. They come in the circle. And this is why the, you know, uh, Solomon was saying, this thing is so boring. You know, they continue to circle, they continue to circle, good, evil, good, evil, good, laugh, cry, laugh. They continue to circle, they continue to circle. But why? That we, we, we have this answer on, on, uh, from verse 9 of Ecclesiastes chapter 3. God giving burden. God giving burden. God just gave us certain burden, certain trouble, certain difficulties certain assignment that we do not sometimes we don't want it but God laid this burden on us verse 9 what profit has the worker from that in which he labors what profit the preacher asked this question Solomon said what profit has the worker from that in which he labors I have seen the God given task God given burden with which the sons of men are to be occupied He has made everything beautiful in his times, in his time, rather. Also, has put eternity in their hearts. He made everything beautiful and he put eternity in their heart. Except that no one can find out the work that God does from beginning to end. So let's first see that verse 9. What profit has the worker from that in which he labors? What does worker gain from his toy? This is not a financial question. This is not a kind of profit. It's not about remuneration or somebody increasing your salary. It's a far more foundational issue that we need to handle. This is what uh, uh, Solomon was trying to say. What is the point of going to work? Why am I going to work? 
So I go to work so I can make money, so I get that money, I can buy clothes, I can get food. Most importantly, I can get food into my stomach, so I go back to work. Then I make money, I can get food, I go back to work, I make money to get food, to buy this, to buy that. I go back to work, I get money to buy this, to buy that. I, get, I go back to work, I get money to do this one. Why? And you do this one continuously until your work here is done. So you want to stay alive. So you go back to work, you get money, you buy food, you eat, you go back to work, you get money, you buy food, so you can stay alive. So this is a burden to man. I have seen the God-given tax which, with which the sons of men are to be occupied. We occupy ourselves with this tax. What is the meaning to this? I go to work, I get money, so I get that money, I get food. Even if I don't have money to buy that clothes, but I must get money to get food so I can put food here, so I can continue to live. Because I, if I don't put food here, I cannot live. So I go back to work, I work, I get money. I, and you do this one, it's a tax. It's too much of a burden. The frustration that men and women experience is actually the result of God giving burden. It's very frustrating. It's very frustrating. But God gave this body. He gave this one, these things to us. We are just foreigners to our destiny. Let me give you this, this breakdown. We say, oh, this is too much of frustration. I'm not, I'm not satisfied. I, I mean, God, I need to have more. I want to be successful. I want to be happy. I need to have more. So I go to college. I, I first, I, I, I go to high school. I start from grade school. I got grade school. I say, okay, God, oh, thank you for this great school or this primary school, whatever country may be, whatever you call it. Oh, now, no, but this is not sufficient. God, let me go for high school. Oh, I went to high school. I graduated from high school. Oh, God, oh, thank you. I got this one. Oh, let me go for college. I went to college. I get the degree. Oh, God, I thank you for this degree. Oh, but I'm not yet satisfied. Okay, God, let me get a job. So I got a job. I started working, and I think, oh, this is good. I think this should be fine with me. Then I, have, I keep having this sense of flatness. I keep having this sense of nothingness. Oh, maybe, I can, let me, God, let me get married. I get married. So, but then I still have this sense of nothingness. Oh, let me have children. Then I got children. I say, oh, God, I got children. Thank you. But again, I still have this sense of flatness. I still have this sense of nothingness. Okay, oh, God, why? Okay, I want my children to also get married so I can do what? I can have grandchildren. Oh, then I have grandchildren. I still have this sense of flatness, nothingness. Maybe my grandchildren will also have children. I become great grand. Then I still have this sense of flatness. And I continue to do this all over. Ultimately, what this is saying is that all these things, they are ultimately transient. They pass. They ultimately cannot fulfill the deepest longing, the deepest longing in the soul of a man. There is this longing in our soul. These things cannot fulfill this longing. Why? We keep having this desire. Oh, God, I want to have more money. You get more money, but you see, continuing to have this, this like, there's a burden, there's a frustration. Ah, this money is not going to do all these things. Oh, God, okay, maybe, maybe if, can I, if I can get more, you get more. You continue to have this frustration. Why? It is God-given burden. Let me tell you this. Except one is a Christian, except you are born again, this burden that God has given us, no one can lift it for you. The only one who can lift it for you is Christ. He said, my yoke is eating, it is easy, my body is light. When you get to your office in the morning tomorrow, and somebody is just being frustrated, is there to put the frustrated on you? Be kind. People are frustrated. On Monday, they go to work, they run <laughs> weekend. Then Sunday is here. Some of them don't even go to fellowship like you. You come here to the fair. Some, some people don't even go to fellowship. Then Monday is, uh, Sunday is there. Oh, we've got to start again. Then this, the rat race begins. Monday, bam. So when they get to office, they kind of get tired, they get frustrated. And they want to push this frustration on somebody. So, so be very kind. When you get to office, you meet somebody on the road. He's driving. He's, ten, he's just very aggressive on his driving. It is the burden that God places in a man. And let me tell you something. This burden will continue 
there will be no rest for our soul until we meet the body maker. The body maker is God and is also the body lifter. Nothing can lift this body for you. Your degree will not lift it for you. Getting married will not lift it for you. Having children is not going to lift it for you. Nothing will lift this body for you. You continue to have this body until you meet the body maker. Solomon said, God is the body maker. He places this body on all of us. And is the only one who can lift that body. No pleasure can lift that body in your life. So be kind to people who are not Christian, who don't have hope. Somebody can never have money and everything. We never have enough. What else do you think somebody wants? You have all the money, you have everything. You've been the president of the United States. You have been, but yet there's no satisfaction. You still want to be in control. There's no satisfaction. You just want to, and let me tell you, even if that man should have what he was looking for, he will not have satisfaction because God has placed that burden on man until you meet Christ. God is the body maker and is the only one who can lift that body. This is the reality. You may not buy it for me. You may not want to believe it. Look at your life. Are you satisfied now? You have PhD. You have this one. Yet there's a body on. You are, you are still looking for more. You get married. You get children. You get everything. Yet you are still looking. Something is missing. You get house. You have car. You have everything. Yet there is a burden on you. It's God giving burden. And Why? He places eternity in us just to let us know that this is not our place of rest. So if you are not a Christian, you have not given your life to Christ, think about Christ. He's the only one who can give many to life. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What a profit as the worker from that in which he labors. What a profit. I have seen that God giving tax with which the sons of men are to be occupied. The body maker put this tax on us. And he's the only one who can leave that body. I want to introduce Christ to you. Honestly speaking, you are blessed. If you're a Christian, you are blessed. You don't know what you have. You are blessed. If you're a Christian, you are born again. You have something that those who don't have that thing, they are in trouble. Those who don't have that thing, life has no meaning. Life has meaning to you because you have the burden lifter. Look at what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 11 from verse 29. All things have been delivered to me by my father. My father delivered all things to me. And no one knows the son except the father. Nor does anyone know the father except the son. And the one to whom the son wills to reveal him. Verse 28. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. And I will give you rest. Only Christ can give us rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am, a, I am gentle and lowly in heart. And you will find rest. For your soul. But people don't want to listen to that. They think they can have meaning in money. They think they can have meaning in power. They think they can have meaning in worldly achievement. They think they can have meaning in education. They think they can have meaning in um, pleasure of life. You can have no meaning to these things. And those of you who are here in part two, I told you the fear of Solomon. Solomon said, I got all these things, but I don't know who is going to take over this thing from me. And his fear came to reality. Rehoboam took over that throne from him, took over his estate, and he was one of the silliest person on earth. This man was so silly. This king was so silly. Read about his account. I, gave, I asked, I was one of the assignments I gave to you, first king, one of this chapter, either 14 or 12, I can't remember of, and this man, 14, thank you, which means you read it. Read, read that story. You see how silly that man was. The, the people came to him and told him, look, your father taxed us too much. We were on that body. The pleasure your father, I'm adding emphasis, the pleasure your father was having was through our tax money. 
Can you please make it easy for us? Can you just reduce this tax? Rehoboam. He said, go back three days. Give me three days. Let me think about it. So they went. Then the, before the three days, he consulted people, which is normal, right? He asked the elders, what do you think I can do? The, elder, the elders told him, you know what? Listen to them. Make it, when you make it easy for them, you do what? You buy them. You buy their heart. Then he called the Yopish. People who don't care. There are some people they don't care. Imagine they're talking about, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, children, children. Listen to what we are discussing. You can't change the whole world. They just made an announcement that uh, they went and raided uh, the former president's uh, house or something like that. And then one man just, one man, one, this yuppie, one man think he can make a change. He went to somewhere in Ohio, went to FBI office and they want to destroy. Even if you destroy that place, can you destroy the whole, the whole FBI? That institution taking care of everybody in this country? Eventually, what happened to him? He lost his life. So, Royal Boom, the Royal Boom, or whatever they call him, that king, consulted uh, yuppies, young people. They told him, when they come back, they told him, tell them that we go to, I'm going to tax you more than my father. You complain my father beat you? Okay, my father beat you with stick, I am going to use sledgehammer. And what do you think they will do? They returned back to your tent, O Israel. Under him, the kingdom was divided. He wasted the whole thing. It was titanic since that time. And so, Solomon was thinking and what he thought came to pass. This God-given burden, the only one who can lift it is the one who places it on you. Going to work, coming back to work, this and that, will never give meaning to life. Some of you love work so much that you can't even have time for God. You are here. Some people think you are wasting time as we are here. You are not wasting time. Some people think you, you, Sunday is the best time to work. Double, double. Does, can't that, Saturday is time and a half. Sunday is what? Double, double. I forget about it. As long as pastor get money. Let me go work. You cannot have satisfaction. It's a burden God places on man. When man fell in, in, in the garden, God told man, don't eat this fruit. The day you eat this fruit, you're going to do what? You're going to die. And that death has to do with both spiritual and physical. Just take it. Then man did what God said man should not do. In the plan of God, there was no burden in the plans of God. There was no death in the plans of God, in the initial plans of God. There was no all this evil you see in the, in the initial plans of God. There was no evil in the initial plans of God, but because we turned our back, you know, against God. And God said, the day you do that, the day you disobey me, you got that, you're going to die. And man begin to die. Man has to die both the spiritual and the what, and the physical. But Jesus Christ came to help us out of the of the spiritual aspect. Because anyone who has the son has what? Life. It's only when you give your life to Christ that the, the first death that is very important, the spiritual death, death, you can escape that. If you refuse to accept Christ, either you accept Christ or you don't accept Christ, all these things happen to us all. And that's what we had in chapter 3. We are not we are, we are just like animals. When it has to do with the second death, the punishment of the physical death, both animals will die and man will die, right? The only difference now is that the, the first spiritual death, if anyone refuses to come through Christ, who can leave that body, that person will experience this, the, uh, the first spiritual death. His so we continue to rot in, in hell. But if we can come to Christ, we can come through Christ back to God, and then he paid that price for that one. The only one he did not pay for was the physical death. We must all experience it. Either you like it or you don't like it. You are immortal here on earth until your work here on earth is done. Then you must do what? You must pay that price. All of us must pay that price. Even when Jesus comes in the sky, 
doing rapture to take us home. You pay that price by changing. You change like in the twinkling of an eye. Because this mortal body cannot inherit immortality. Amen. You cannot escape. You must pay that price. But what Solomon is telling us here is the day is evil. Think about how you spend your time. Think about your relationship with Christ. Give your life to him. He's the one who can live that body. The book of Isaiah said in Isaiah chapter 8, 28 verse, verse 12 said, To whom he said, this is the rest with which you may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing, yet they will not hear. No matter how I explain, some people will not hear. They will not hear. Come to Christ. That's where you have the rest. They will not want to come. The only one who can leave that burden on us is Christ. Are you a Christian? Are you born again? If you're a Christian, you are born again, I want to thank God for your life. And if I'm not yet born again, is we can do it now since you are still in intact in your body. Uh, but if you don't do it today, we never know when the end will come. Only God determines that. And this is a common sense. You don't determine, you don't determine when you are here. Do you determine it? Did you tell your father to go meet your mother somewhere so that you can be born? Did you tell your daddy where you must be born, right? No. Some of you are born here because your parent came here, right? Or your parent was born here. No, I don't want to, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Since you do not have control over that, if I tell you to choose where you want to be born, some of you, you will do scale of preference. You see, you can say America first. Maybe I can choose Canada. I will manage London. You will manage London. <laughs> you scale it down. And the place where I was born may possibly be the last. You may possibly put Nigeria as the last. No, not that. Oh, okay. Somebody is saying it will be number one. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, or all of the above, okay? But we have no control over these things. Neither will you have control over when you live here. And for that, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Some of us, we are so afraid. The burden of fear is so much on us. Our future, what's going to happen in the future? Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. You, will not, you are immortal until your work here on earth is done. But when your work here on earth is done, it might be when you are 100 Maybe when you are 80, maybe when you are 70, maybe when you are well and whatever, it can be when be when when somebody is 30. You know, Jesus Christ was 33 and a half. He did so much that even even no, no one, people living 120 didn't was not able to do, you know, they were not able to do what he did within that short time. So it's how well, it's not how long or whatever. So think about Christ. If you are not giving your life to Christ, I think we should stop here so we can continue next week because the time is running so fast. And um, the God-given body brought so much frustration. And our friends that are not Christian, our friends that are not born again, they are frustrated with everything. They are frustrated. They are confused by everything. And I tell you when they ask you question, don't look at them as if they are stupid. It's God giving body. They're not stupid. Some are just tired of everything. Because they, are, they, they don't have the body lifter. And if you allow the body lifter into your life, somehow, somehow, you will see meaning to all we do on earth. The Bible says something that we don't want. God made us for himself. Until we realize that life will have no meaning. Revelation 4, Revelation 4, verse 11 says, You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your and, and by your will they exist and were created. Until we realize that. That you are made for God, your time is made for God, your treasures are made for God, your talent are made for God. We are made for God. You are not made for yourself. Until we realize that, we we'll continue to be frustrated. We we'll con we'll continue to be confused. We we'll continue to look for many in, in places where there are no many. 
until you know that you are here for one reason, and that purpose is to glorify the Lord. Your destiny, your life, everything that you have, your degree, your money, your everything that you have, everything is for God and only for God alone. Until you come to that point and you submit everything to God, there will be no rest for our soul. God places that burden there. And just for us not to be able to relax so much here that you will forget eternity. What will the poverty man? If he gains the whole of this world and loses his own soul. Because there's nothing you can give in exchange to you. There's nothing you can give in exchange to your soul. So think about Christ and think about the fact that only in him you have meaning to life. If you have not given your life to him, please think about him. Give your life to him. And of course, if you have given your life to him, check, cross-check your life and see if you are not doing things as you're supposed to do things. And you can make changes right now before it is too late for us. The Lord, may the Lord bless us in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you this afternoon. We bless you for this wonderful time and the time to go into your word and the time to refresh our mind. And what you have told us, help us to understand further in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray, O oh Lord, that at the end of life, we shall have no regret in Jesus' name. All the frustration, all the confusion, the things of this world will bring. We ask, O oh God, let us go back and resort to you and look for meaning in you, the mighty name of Jesus. As many of us that have not given our lives to you, continue to give us trouble until we come to meet you, the body lifter, the mighty name of Jesus. And for those of us that have come to you, you, the body lifter, to take all this burden to learn from you, we ask, oh God, that you help us to continue to stay with you and not wander around and live our life to the glory of your name, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Lord. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. God bless you.